O God, for the waves have come up to my neck. I know I've said it here several times. I don't swim. I don't like the water. Um, which those of you that know that I race sailboats every Tuesday night might find very interesting. Um, I love being on the water. I love being on that sailboat. And sometimes when I'm on that sailboat, much to this, probably to the chagrin of my wife, I don't wear a life jacket. <laughs> which seems kind of stupid, actually, right? Because I don't really know how to swim, and I don't have one of these with me on the boat. And if I did, as I was going over, I wouldn't have time to grab said thing to keep me afloat. Now, I say I can't swim, but I actually can swim enough that I could probably keep myself above water long enough for Bill to swing the boat around and come back and get me. The reason I don't wear a life jacket on a boat, though, is because I trust Bill and the other two people that are on that boat every night that we race. It's the same thing as this, right? This little piece of foam should not be able to keep my big body floating in the water. But it does. Right? How many of you have ever felt like you were sinking into something that was going to completely overtake you? How many of you ever felt like life was completely out of control and anything that you did was only going to get you deeper into a hole that you were going into? And what do you do? Every foothold next is something that slips further and further into, into this hole, into this situation that seems to be encompassing all of your life and, and taking over everything that's happened. Now, I've been your pastor for about five and a half years, right? Before I was your pastor, I was at a congregation in Texas that I resigned my call. I don't know if everybody here knows this story. I resigned my call at that congregation in February of 2012. When did I start here? It's been that great that nobody remembers. That's good. Actually, it's been a long time. Let's do the math real quick. 2019, five and a half years ago was January 7th, 2014, was my first day in that office. I resigned my call February 12th, February of 2012. I started here January. 2014. That's almost two years. What did I do those two years? Preschool. Did you make I was learning how to swim. I wasn't I wasn't learning how to swim, Clyde, but let me let me tell you, I definitely had one of these. Right? For two years, and not even for two years, because the writing was on the wall with the congregation that I served in Texas, and I was actually looking for a new call in January of 2011. So for three years, I was searching for a call. This may not be a good story to tell them. It took me three years to find, for God, to find the two of us to put us together. And during those three years, I talked to I don't know how many congregations. I actually talked to a congregation that went to a call vote. And they voted not to call me. And during those three years, I had several of my colleague friends ask me, why don't you just give up? What is keeping you going? This hole that you're in is so deep that you can't possibly see the top of it. And you have to feel like every day you're fighting to stay alive. But you know what? I was. It wasn't easy. But I kept 
kept searching and I kept fighting because I knew God had a plan. I kept searching and I kept fighting because I had three young people to take care of. I kept searching and I kept fighting because I had someone who backed me no matter what and kept telling me that God was going to see us through. See, each and every one of us in any part of our lives will sink into a deep, dark hole. And it'll seem like no matter what we do, it's not going to turn out right. And we wonder if we're going to be able to get out of that hole, out of that darkness, and be able to see the light again. We wonder, is everything going to turn out okay? Is everything going to be the way that I think it should be? And the answer to that is no, nothing's going to be the way you think it should be. Because most of the time, our ideas about our own lives are not what God has planned, are not what's in the picture. But you know what? When you find yourself in that hole, when you find yourself in that place where you can't see the light and you don't know what's going to happen next and you don't know if you can even take another step forward, you can cry out to God. You can say, I'm sinking down into this deep hole, and where in the world are you? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? Why can't you make this change? Because you know what? Those three years, my friends thought that I was handling and keeping it all together. But each and every day, more than once a day, probably every other minute, I was crying out to God, going, what in the world is going on? How are we supposed to make this through this? You know what? God's big enough to take it because God, like this little noodle, is going to hold you up. No matter how deep you think you're sinking, no matter how big the waves get, He's going to keep you above the water. And He's big enough to listen to you say, I can't take this anymore. I want you to do something about it. I want you to change this. I need this to be better than it is. Right? That's what David or whoever wrote this psalm this morning is saying. Psalm 69. Save me because I'm sinking into my neck. The water is all up around me and I can't possibly understand how any of this is ever going to get any better. I can't possibly understand how my life is going to work. I can't possibly understand how this situation is going to be turned around. Because everything that's happening in my life is going wrong and nothing is going to change. And does it change in the psalm for this person? No, it actually doesn't. Which you would think, well, where's the good news in that then, Pastor? The good news is, at the very end, right, the author keeps saying, my help comes from who? God. My help comes from God. And I know that. No matter what my situation is, no matter what I'm going through, I know that God is always going to be there to lift me up and to pull me out of this. Even though I can't see it now, I know that God has his hand on my life. For those three years that I was looking for a call, for one year in Texas, just in Texas, and then the next years throughout the whole of the United States. And if any of you want to hear more of that story, I'll gladly share details that you probably wouldn't even want to hear about the process of looking for a call during those times. That's not to say that I still wasn't being used by God. I was. I served a congregation in San Antonio. I did a bunch of other stuff. And God had his hand on my life. But in that dark pit, you wondered, how is this going to work? Save me, oh God. Lift me up out of this mire and put me onto a dry place so that the waters no longer encroach around my neck. But no matter what, be my noodle. And keep me afloat. Because I know that's what you'll always do. So if you're in one of those moments right now where you don't know what's happening and you don't know what to do, cry out to God for whatever it is you think will make the situation better. And God's going to hear you. And God may not give you what you ask for, but God is definitely going to hear you and give you what you need. And be with you through every last moment of every last darkness that you walk through. And I can say that without a doubt. Because I've been there. And I've walked through it. And I know God will not let 
anyone down. Because that's what he's promised us. So rest in the assurance that no matter what happens, that God is always there. God is always going to be your people to keep you afloat. And that God will always give you the strength you need and bring you to the path that he set before.